king. He was a king who was full of lust himself. Lust for, and when we and when we study later, we'll find that Ahab lusted things that were not his. Uh, we find that he want he lusted after Naboth's vineyard, and so. Uh, uh, the lust of this evil king. See, see, one of the things we, we got to understand is Jezebel doesn't like to be out front. Uh, usually, uh, Jezebel operates behind the throne. So Jezebel needs a, a, a lustful authority, somebody in authority who's lustful. And that's why when men, especially, uh, and this is because we see it manifested a lot, that's why when men a lot of times are, 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 are have uncontrollable lust, well, a lot of times, uh, uh, they will build a relationship with their wife or, or, or with some other uh, person that operates out of this spirit of Jezebel. They'll build a relationship based on their lust being fulfilled. And so, uh, and so the power source of Jezebel was the authority of the king. So uh, uh, as much as we want to focus on Jezebel, Jezebel would not have been uh, able to do what she did had she not been tolerated and had, she, had the king not abdicated his power through sin, lust, and disobedience to God, he, abdicate, he abdicated his, his power and authority, and she basically operated through his power, and she was the power behind the throne. And that's one of the number one characteristics of a, a Jezebel spirit, because they will operate out of stolen power, or power that has been uh, uh, abdicated, or where, 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 where somebody vacates their seat of authority, uh, you know, we see that a lot in homes where the man won't, you know, when a man won't be responsible, he will either he won't work or he won't he won't take care of the family. So the woman says, well, I've got to do it. Well, when she take steps up in that man's role, then she begins to take her take over a lot of other things than just the finances. A lot of times when it comes to discipline, when a man won't discipline the children, well, well, the woman will, will step up and begin to be the authoritarian in the house. And see, so a lot of times. Uh, you know, even in modern day society where we have marriages or I mean, not marriages, but we have uh, this uh, this baby daddy complex. In other words, where people are having uh, children out of wedlock and there's no father in the home or the father doesn't stay uh, in the home and they don't get married and they don't begin to, uh, you know, begin to try to raise those children properly. Well, then the woman will, 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 will take over and uh, she'll begin to raise the children herself now now and what and, and what we don't understand because the man vacated his authority his responsibility then the woman will will step up and begin to operate sometime in that masculine role and and that will cause uh, uh and, and and that will cause problems later on for the children because that is a man's role okay now i'm not saying that you know mothers have to do what mothers have to do amen we got to raise our children and if a man doesn't want to be a father then um of course, a mother has to do that, but but usually, uh, uh, in in order for a woman to stay out of that masculine role or to stay out of that uh, you know uh, that dominant role, uh, then sometimes it's good to get a surrogate father. But 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 anyway, the power of Jezebel operates uh, uh, on a man's vac on a on a man or someone in authority. It doesn't have to be a man, but someone in authority vacating their authority because of their lust. In other words. Uh, you know, this is what happens while we, while we find there's not a lot of men in church. Well, a lot of time because a, a lot of men are so wrapped up in their lust, they're pursuing hobbies, they're pursuing the lust of money, they're pursuing the lust of the job, they're pursuing the lust of women, uh, they're pursuing so many different lusts that uh, that they don't have time for that. And even men that are Christian men, uh, they're so busy and distracted a lot of times that they're not pursuing God. And so they vacate the priest role in the home. And so the woman steps up in that role because she may be praying or fasting and it pushes her over into control and dominance because he will not do what he needs to do. But anyhow, even though a man is, is even though a man and I'm not just talking about a man, but even though a person is not uh, operating in, properly in their authority, we are never to usurp that authority. Our, our responsibility, the Bible says, pray for those in authority. In other words, our responsibility when someone's not stepping up in authority is to pray. It's not to go ahead and do it anyway because that is, that is, the, that is the crack that the spirit of Jezebel needs to cause you to begin to open that door to, to, to the harlotries or to the schemes and the manipulations and tricks of, of that spirit of Jezebel. So, so even though a person is not doing what they're supposed to do, we're still obligated to submit to that authority. You know, of course, we're not talking about abuse or, and when I say abuse, I mean physical abuse or things like that. Uh, you know, we're not, of course, we don't, we don't tolerate that abuse. Or if someone in authority is abusing our authority, uh, telling us to do wrong or to commit sin or, or, or break the law, we know we don't, we don't submit to that. But we do submit to authority 
uh, just because that authority is not as spiritual, as deep as we want it to be, we still submit to it and we pray for it. And that's how we, under authority, keep ourselves covered by not usurping authority because we see a need for 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 this person in authority to to operate in our authority and we want to push them into that so we begin to usurp their authority if 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 there is no if 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 if, if and, and, I, and i'm speaking on the home here and even the church but but if there is no authority if, if 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 a person in authority does not want to accept that authority then our responsibility is to pray now this is real prevalent in churches uh if you see this in churches where a pastor would be passive uh a uh, passive leadership uh draws uh jezebel like magnets like 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 a magnet uh passivity is a drawer of the spirit of jezebel because uh if you if you if you look in the book of revelations when the bible was talking about when jesus was giving the word to john about the seven churches one of the churches he was talking to was church of thyatira and 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 their problem was jesus said he had a problem with him and it was that they tolerated that spirit of jezebel she set herself up as a prophet prophetess and began to teach the people and led them into idolatry and sexual immorality. Well, that's what the same spirit was doing in the Old Testament. And we see we see a resurgence of it in the New Testament. So I'm not talking about the woman Jezebel. It is a spirit of Jezebel that that operates behind people with a religious spirit that lust power and uh, lust control. So but the Bible says that God judged the church. Jesus was ready to pronounce a judgment on the church because they tolerated or the pastor of that church was passive towards that spirit he allowed it to happen he tolerated that spirit now the way jezebel has flourished uh, in our society and even in the body of christ is through this uh tolerance mentality and and and, and you know where we and tolerance is basically not judging anything and the bible does not tell us not to judge the bible says that we can judge a righteous judgment once we do and right ourselves in other words uh it, when the bible says you know, don't judge the speck in your brother's eye and you have a beam in your own eye. When I remove the beam out of my eye, I can see clearly to judge the speck. And a lot of times we think because the Bible, people, people, especially, uh, especially this, 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 this worldly philosophy has taken all of the scriptures in the Bible about judging and about, uh, 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 you know, and, 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 and about uh, um, uh, correction and discipline they've taken that out and said that god is just a god of love and, and and so don't never judge anything well see see where there's the absence of judgment uh then lawlessness prevails see because king ahab did not stand up and 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 and, and rule and judge in righteousness then lawlessness prevailed and so this is why i said that passive pastors uh, passive uh, uh ministry will tolerate that spirit and a lot of times they tolerate the spirit of Jezebel because uh, uh, this person may be gifted a lot of times people that operate out of spirit of Jezebel are gifted and talented they can do they can do many things uh, 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 they uh, they have an ability in the beginning to make the pastor look good they have an ability to uh, to 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 get things accomplished they seem faithful and loyal uh, because there's a lot of falseness to this but they seem so faithful uh, to the to, you know to the ministry uh, they seem to have insight sometimes, sometimes prophetic insight, sometimes discernment. And, and so a pastor will begin to trust and begin to tolerate uh, or overlook some of the other uh, 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 fruits uh, of the person uh, because they're needing uh, this person in an area of ministry. And so, so like I said, so the first point was the power, uh, 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 her power source. And remember, Jezebel's power source is weak leadership. So if you are in a ministry, if you if you're a pastor, uh, the, the the one of the greatest ways to 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 guard against the spirit of Jezebel is having a strong uh, uh, having a strong no nonsense leadership, especially between you and your wife or you and your spouse. If you're a minister and you and you, maybe you're a female minister, but you need to have strong uh, uh, strong unity and a no-nonsense policy between you and your spouse because the spirit of Jezebel comes in and divides leadership and begins to uh, play one against the other and cause some cause cause uh, maybe a a, a a minister in the church they'll begin to play on that minister and begin to build them up as being more spiritual than a pastor and and so the pastor will feel threatened and stuff like that so you have to make sure that there is a unity and a no-nonsense policy when it comes to when it comes to leadership in other words you have to judge things and deal with things in a swift manner and that will and, and and not be passive and sit back 
and, and, and use the excuse where I'm just trying to walk in love. See, that's a great excuse that pastors use to keep from confronting because the number one thing Jezebel hates is confrontation. When she 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 hides when you confront her. So a lot of times that a, a, a non-confrontational pastor will begin to slowly give his authority and power to that spirit, and that spirit will begin to dominate, and he'll become more and more codependent because in some way, listen, I told you, Jezebel operates on the fact that the person in authority has certain lusts out of control. That spirit will begin to.